All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to talk about my citrus trees. We have a number of them here that I'm growing in the Philadelphia area in containers. It is actually too cold here to grow the majority of citrus in the ground. We have to grow them in containers and move them into the house or into some sort of winter storage area location to get them through the winter time. It's just too cold here to plant them in the ground. And for most of us, it's probably true we really need to keep most of the varieties here that I grow or most of the higher quality, the higher fruit quality varieties of citrus really need temperatures above 25 in the winter to survive or to produce good quality fruit. So for, he, for here, me in the Philadelphia area, that's a definite, uh, but there are some varieties. I don't wanna say it's impossible as I actually have a citrus tree planted in the ground on the west side of the property that's been there for a number of years that I planted from seed. So it's not like it's impossible, but definitely if you wanna grow these higher quality varieties like a bare seedless lime, a Meyer lemon, we have a Calamondan orange here. We also have a lime quat. This is a Australian finger lime. This is actually a mandarin tree. Um, and then this one over here in the front is a, uh, a kumquat. Fukushu is the name of the variety. So. We have a number of different varieties of citrus and this is just kind of what we have to do. And in this process of growing them in containers, there are a number of things I think that are really important to look out for. As I do every single spring when I bring them out onto the patio here, out into the natural environment and shift their, their current state from a house plant to a potted plant on the patio, there are a number of things I think are worth really mentioning in this video. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So. The first step of having a really happy and healthy citrus tree in the beginning of our season, now that it's past frost, the nighttime temperatures are very warm. We've also adjusted them to the sunlight, by the way. The natural light out here is quite intense um, and also higher in duration than it might be in your south facing window. So we have to adjust them to the temperatures, adjust them to the wind, adjust them to the humidity, adjust them to the sunlight very specifically. We don't wanna get them sunburned once we get all that straightened out, a couple things we have to worry about is actually watering the trees. That's probably the first thing I would do. Water the trees in really well. Typically our, our citrus, when growing in containers and just in general, they're very subjected to root rot. They don't have very well established root systems. They can be quite finicky in containers. And I like to keep them on the drier side when I grow them as, as house plants in the house. So the soil's a bit drier. When I actually bring them out here, first thing to do is water them. It's a no brainer. Uh, they need that extra water because right now the trees have recognized it's warmer. The trees have recognized that the season's beginning. They're putting out their flowers. They're putting out new, new leaves. This is really the time we need that water. We need that food as well. So that's another critical element is to get their metabolisms going with that extra heat now in this environment that we have give them all the heat that you can early in the spring, uh, but also we wanna water them and feed them really well. Typically, citrus trees are very heavy feeders. I have some slow release that I have put down on top of the soil here. These little yellow beads that you see on top of the soil is enough to get them through a number of months during the growing season. And I typically apply another feeding before I put them away inside for the winter time. Um, so that's really important to continually feed them, continually water them, make sure the soil is nice and moist at this point. The other thing I like to do is actually give them some compost. So you saw perhaps on one of the trees, I like to give them a layer of compost on top of the soil here. This helps with the microbes on the, in the soil here, adding this extra mulch layer especially something that's really well broken down and not just a layer of mulch, although you could do a layer of mulch as well. And maybe I would uh, put down a layer of compost and then put down a layer of wood chips. You just don't wanna get too carried away with too much material on top of the soil because you do need to have that crown of the tree exposed. As I said, root rot can be a problem with these citrus trees and you don't wanna to have too much organic material touching the crown of the tree. However, it is really nice, especially with these younger trees and maybe 
for my own experience here, a lot of these trees have kind of sunk in. When I originally planted them at a certain height in the pot, the trees have definitely sunken in a bit. And now there's a lot of room here, wasted space um, in these containers that I could be making use of, having a little bit of extra soil for those roots to grow in. So I like to add a little bit on top. It might be a good idea, especially with this tree here, which we've got actually quite a few inches of, of um, space in the container. Take the tree up out of the container and throw a little bit of compost underneath and maybe a, and then put it back in and then add a little bit of compost on top. Of course, really trying hard to avoid any kind of damage to the roots. And uh, you don't want to have transplant shock. We don't want to damage these roots in any way. But for me, exact, I think that's exactly how I feel about it. Giving them a little bit of extra good soil, a little bit of extra nutrients, but mainly focusing on uh, those microbes in the soil, feeding all that good stuff. And uh, growing them in grow bags, I find, can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, I think it's a really great idea personally to add a level of soil to these grow bags every year. This mandarin I have in a actual plastic pot, I would disagree in a way, or I would say it's just not as important to add that level of soil on top. Maybe instead I'll just add some mulch. But um, again, it is a critical piece of information there. Because what we're trying to do really at this point, the trees are growing, they're flowering, we want to support all that. We want to have them well fed, continue to grow all year. This is when they're going to set a lot of their fruits, at least that first crop. Some of these varieties may actually flower multiple times of the year. And we can kind of have fruit on them almost continually throughout the season. Oddly enough, this mandarin actually has some fruit on it that we're going to taste in a minute. But that's one thing I think is really critical there. So we got the water, we got the heat. We talked about adjusting them to the sunlight. We talked about feeding them. And then of course, compost. The other big thing I think is really involving pruning and staking. I think it's a good idea to stake these young fig, um, citrus trees, excuse me. They really like to, um, at least when you get them from nurseries, they do usually stake them. But sometimes these stakes can be a little bit flimsy. Maybe adding an, ex an extra really heavy duty stake to the center can help with controlling the shape of the trees and also maybe staking some of these younger branches that you want to have a better form with. We're all about trying to maximize that sunlight regardless of the fruit tree that you're growing. There's only so much sunlight in this particular spot, but we want to try to maximize that light in this given area without having that internal shading that the trees may actually do. Of course, the canopy of the citrus tree is much more dense than other trees and you need that, but Certainly, if you could stake a branch away from each other that's not crisscrossing or in some way maximizing light, it's a great idea. The other thing is using our pruning shears. I already came in here and pruned most of the trees, but citrus, very regularly, I will have to come in here multiple times of the season and do some pruning because this new flush of growth that's going to happen can be very lanky and long and thin, and we want to have the trees a bit more compact. That's really good for building, especially at early ages, the bare bones of the trees, having a dense canopy that's well balanced, uh, that achieves the sunlight that we want. Uh, we don't want to have these long lanky shoots that have fruits on them and then they start drooping and it's just, it's not good. So I come in here a few times of the year actually, especially now, and remove some of the long lanky shoots that we don't necessarily need. Um, also I would prune out any dead wood because typically you have your trees in the, in the, in the window all, all winter time, the health of the trees slowly start to decline. As we get them from now until the fall, when we bring them actually inside, the health of the trees are rising and rising to a level that will eventually meet its highest level of health. But then we bring them inside and the trees don't really like that environment as much. And the, the health of the trees start to decline. And some trees, unfortunately, I'm sure a lot of you have maybe experienced this where you killed your citrus tree in a container. It's really because it's just too cold or maybe we water the trees too much or maybe actually we have too many pests. And this is the next topic. A lot of us, when we bring our trees out from inside, we bring them out here, they are filled with pests. And that means the scale, the mealybugs. Uh, we also can have spider mites. These are typically bugs that like a drier environment 
they feed on the trees in the winter time. Uh, they damage the trees. And this is a big contributor to the decline of the health of the trees. So I would recommend, and I do actually have quite a bit of scale on these trees, especially this lime quat back here. I would recommend either rubbing the branches with your hands. You could also uh, spray the trees. You could uh, spray the trees with water or spray the trees with some sort of neem or soap or uh, any other insecticide, it's up to you. Um, but getting rid of these pests can really go a long way. For me, I'm gonna mostly leave them alone. I believe that the ecosystem, the bug ecosystem in my yard will take care of this without my intervention. Um, the ladybugs will come in here and eat the scale. If there's food, they will come. If there's no food, you won't see any ladybugs. So those are the main tips. Those are the things you really wanna watch out for. Um, and I would highly recommend you follow all those steps. You pay attention to all those things and you'll have a great growing season. Um, this is also the time, probably most of you, I'm gonna get two citrus trees in the mail. They're coming very soon, a yuzu and a sadachi. I would love to grow them in a container, get them well established for a year or two and then plant them in the ground at a future farm of mine to see if I can get them to survive the winters here in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Um, but, you know, that's a critical thing here, I think. For most of us, we're getting citrus trees in the mail now, putting them in containers. Maybe we'll do a video on that if anyone's interested and show you that whole process because um, it can be very difficult getting these trees established. But if you follow a lot of the tips I just mentioned, you will see good success. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this video is actually we have some fruit on this mandarin tree. It took a number of years. It took me like five years to get fruit off of this tree. You can see there is some fruit and it's, it's May uh, at the time of filming. The fruits are not typically as orange as maybe I'd like them to be, but it depends on the variety. Not all citrus or not all oranges or mandarins turn completely orange. Sometimes they are picked commercially. They're often picked commercially somewhat green and then they spray them actually with a uh with food with a coloring with a dye to make them look orange so i would think at this point this is actually relatively ripe it's got a great fragrance to it um this is actually a really nice little treat to have citrus at this point of the year where there's nothing out here other than asparagus that's ripe and maybe the garden will start up pretty soon but this is really nice Here's actually the fruit, very small mandarin, guys. Super small. The trees are still getting themselves established. But yeah, I would not expect full-size fruit. What they say, especially with sweet citrus like this, is that they will not become sweet. That's the word on the street. Because these sweeter citrus varieties need colder nights. So we'll see right now. I've tasted one before. And so far, I would say that's true. Actually, and I, you know, it's not like I don't believe people, but I want to find out for myself. It seems like so far that these sweeter varieties of citrus really do need a colder night, which you just can't get if you have the tree in the wintertime. Uh, I'm sorry, if you have the tree in the house as a house plant all winter. That was actually very good. <laughs> so I don't know where I stand exactly because this variety here a lot of seeds in this one this mandarin here that I got from Stark Brothers Nursery um, the first one I had wasn't sweet that's when we had them in the greenhouse but ever or, sorry in the sunroom and that's just a sunny window. But as soon as I brought them out outside for a few weeks, um, maybe those colder nights have sweetened this up and actually it may be actually possible to grow this particular variety in a container in a colder place and actually get sweet citrus because that's, that that's what this is. Now it's very small. But I would say this is just as good, if not better, than the tasting the mandarins that you can buy at the store, like the cuties. 
and those really small mandarins. This is actually is really good, guys. Unreal. I was not expecting that at all. I was totally expecting to agree with most people in that this is just not sweet, but it is. So that's this little video here, guys, of the citrus. Little update. Hope you guys loved it. Let me know down in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Check out the other videos we've done on citrus. I'll see you guys later, all right? Take care.